This is the second presentation for the ankle and calcaneum. The MRI is used to study the four components of the joints, ligaments, tendons, osseous structures, and neurovascular structures. The ligaments, mainly lateral, medial, and syndesmotic, are better seen in axial planes. The tendons, flexors, and extensors are seen in axial and sagittal. The bones are seen in coronal views and the vessels are seen better in axial planes. These are the bones forming the knee, the ankle joint, tibia, fibula and talus. Uh, to discriminate between stress fracture and insufficiency fracture, stress means something stressing, that means a force applied to a normal bone while insufficiency fracture is the fracture which is insufficient to be caused by a, a stress so it is due to abnormal bone the fracture here is due to insufficient bone matrix that means osteoporosis or osteomalacia so to gather together stress fracture is abnormal stress fall down for example on, norm, on a normal bone while insufficiency fracture is a normal stress walking for example in <coughs> patients with the osteomalacia or osteoporosis the mri is used only when conventional radiographs are normal or inconclusive in this we have stress fracture, this one, and bone edema around, and here it is, and bone edema around, the bone edema in T1 is low, intense, while in uh, T2 weighted image it is hyper intense. Another example, calcaneal stress fracture. It is dense because it is the bone is gathering together, forming density. And this is the marrow edema, low in T1, high in T2. Here there is another one in the distal tibia, stress fracture, with the <coughs> marrow edema seen in T2 weighted images. Here is another one in navicular bone compression with bone edema seen in the stir or the T2 weighted images as hyper intensity. Bone contusion in T1 weighted images is rather is usually hyper intense. Now osteochondritis scans. This table could be abbreviated in four stages either stage of edema marrow edema or stage of attempt separation or stage of separate but not displaced or the stage of being displaced fragment so we have edema attempt at separation separate but not displaced and displaced Here, this one is the, it's not bone edema, it is uh, uh, incomplete separation. And here, this one, we have separate but not displaced fragment here. Notice that the bone around is about the normal, same as normal. But here the difference, there is something different. The bone around is contused and there is a regular outline of the articular surface, including part of the articular surface and part of the bone, and that's why the name is osteochondral fracture. And this is osteochondral fracture, it's a fracture, it is due to trauma, but the previous one is something insidious, and this is a pit pit in the bone small pit in the bone osteochondral fracture 
Lytic lesions of in the tiller bone, for example, in tiller dome may be due to bone cyst, as in this case. And here the bone surrounding the bone cyst is showing minimal reaction. Minimal reaction. There is no septa. There is no septa within that bone. No septation and no fluid fluid levels. The calcaneum is famous with the formation of simple bone cysts as this one. Here the reaction around is minimal and the content is appear homogeneous, no septa and no fluid fluid levels. Calcaneal cyst. This one in uh, a lytic lesion involving the talus it's compressed, vacuolated and there are some septa in between the bones around are osteoporotic uh, and here we have the hypointense due to fluid and the, that one showing the fluid fluid levels in the stair or the T2 weighted images this is an original bone cyst of the talus lytic lesion may be a ganglion but there is, for us there is no differences between a ganglion and simple bone cyst both are hypo intensity 1 hyper intensity 2 well defined minimal reaction around and the uh, def there is no much difference between the two we can have this lytic lesion in the bone with minimal sclerosis inside and this is in T1 appearing hyper intense that means it contains fat and here in the fat suppression it disappeared and only a central focal edema is seen it's intraosseous lipoma intraosseous lipoma now the ligaments around the ankle are four groups either on the lateral aspect medial aspect or in between the bone and then we study the sinus tarsi on the lateral aspect uh, sorry uh, generally ligaments are appear striated on the lateral aspect now we will start with the distal tibiofibular that is connecting each bone with each, the bones with each other we have an anterior one here And posterior one here, and this is the fibula, and this is the tibia. So this is the anterior tibial fibula, and this is the posterior tibial fibula, and that is the one in between, interosseous one. So we have the distal tibial fibula, syndesmotic or syndesmotic com or communicating ligaments between the tibia and the fibula are three: the anterior tibial fibula, the posterior tibial fibula and in between is the intermuscular one, interosseous uh, one, anterior tibiofibular, posterior tibiofibular. So these three are the distal tibiofibular syndesmotic complex. But we have another group, it's the lateral group. The lateral group is the anterior talofibular because the lateral is the, there is a fibula and the posterior talofibular, this is the anterior talofibular, and this is the posterior talofibular, and as we see, there is a good landmark here, which is the C-shaped malulus, lateral malulus. And on the other side, the same, this is anterior talofibular, this is posterior talofibular, and this is the C-shaped malular fossa, lateral malular fossa. Now, there is an important observation. If you have intact ATF or the anterior telofibular, no looking for ligamentous injury on the lateral aspect because this is the weakest one. This is the most vulnerable to injury, the anterior telofibular. And if it is normal, that means the lateral group of ligaments are normal. Mind you that there is another observation on the deltoid ligaments because it is being strong 
it is the uh, uh, last to be told. Now, the calcaneo fibular ligament. The calcaneo fibular ligament is the ligament between the calcaneum and fibula, this one, and it is indulged between peroneal, peroneus tendons and the subtalar joint space. Its maximum thickness is 5 mm. It is a thin one. The posterior talofibular, again, it is the, related to the concavity of the lateral mass or the lateral malulus, which is C-shaped. This is the posterior talofibular. And here can you, you can see the posterior talofibular in posterior cuts <coughs> running between the calcaneum and the fibula. And this is the calcaneo fibula. The anterior talofibular ligament tail, which is the most important finding suggestive of injury or irregular thickening, heterogeneous signal or absence. Now we go back to the C shaped lateral malulus and then check what's anterior to it. If there is no ligament here, that means it is cut. If there is interruption here, that means that this one is cut. And this is the lateral mass. This is the lateral mass of the lateral malulus. Anterior to it is the anterior talofibular ligament. It is cut here. And this one shows nicely how it is cut and there is some fluid in between. So heterogeneous intensity, irregular thickening, incomplete or absent ligament such as a tear. Anterior telofibular tear is related to the C loop or the C shaped lateral malulus. This is the C shaped lateral malulus. C shaped lateral malulus. C shaped lateral malulus. Now, anterior, here it is there, this is the fibula, here we lost the, the low intensity here, this is the one is thickened, this one is thickened, this one is thickened, examples of tear. Now going to the medial aspect or the deltoid or the tibio tailor, tibio tailor, between the tibia and the talus. We have the talo, tibio talar, anterior and posterior, tibio navicular, tibio calcaneal, and tibio spring. So anterior and posterior, we have the anterior tibio talar ligament, this one, and the posterior tibio, tibio talar ligament. <coughs> and then we have the, between the tibia and navicular, between the tibia and calcaneum, and the spring ligament. These all are called the deltoid ligament. It is a strong ligament. It usually torn. It's usually torn in uh, 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 fractures, in trauma. If this is the tibia. So between the tibia and the calcaneum, between the tibia and between the tibia and the calcaneum, between the tibia and talus, uh, these are the ligaments on the medial aspect between the tibia and talus, between the tibia and calcaneum, but we have also the anterior tibiotalar and posterior tibiotalar. Anterior and posterior will not be seen here, 
but this is the medial aspect we have the between the tibia and talus and between the tibia and calcaneum these are two ligaments one and two the sinus tarsi space it's a large space <coughs> between the inferior aspect of the talus this is the talus and the superior aspect of the calcaneum anterior to the posterior subtalar joint this is the subtalar joint it contains fat and two ligaments one is called the cervical ligament and one is called the interosseous ligament talus Calcanium, space. This is the posterior, the uh, subtalar joint. This is anterior to it. It is full of fat, cervical, and interosseous ligaments. In sinus tarsi syndrome, could be inversion injury and we have loss of fat or marrow edema marrow edema around fluid inside and loss of fat are the criteria of sinus tarsi syndrome any tendon could be swollen this is called grade 1 injury could be stretched and this is grade 2 or partial injury would be cut will be grade 3 what are the tendons we are searching for you have posterior group medial group lateral group anterior group posterior medial lateral anterior these are the four components or the four compartments for the tendons posterior compartment is the Achilles tendon this is the Achilles tendon normal uniform in, in thickness and smooth and black the anterior and posterior rolls are parallel no swelling and is uniformly is uniformly hypo intense after exercise this muscle would go into spasm and this is called accessory soleus syndrome showing some edema anterior to the Achilles tendon anterior to the Achilles tendon it's a muscle swollen and showing some edema it's called the accessory soleus syndrome anterior to the Achilles tendon showing swelling and edema <coughs> peritendinosis is the diffuse increases the T2 signal and with anterior fluid collection this is peritendinous of the Achilles. Persitis and Hogland syndrome that means fluid collection in the retrocalcaneal bursa, uh, bursal fluid. You might find, find some marrow edema and insertional tendinosis. At the insertion of the tendon, we might get some swelling here. This is some swelling in the tendon and this is some edema and this is some uh, some fluid and this is minimal edema uh, this is called bursitis or retro calcaneal bursitis retro calcaneal bursitis the components are swollen tendon swollen fluid and insertional tendinosis Hagerland syndrome is a retro 
calcaneal bursitis as we said retrocalcaneal bursitis retro achilles bursitis and insertional tendinopathy so this is insertional tendinopathy this is retro achilles bursitis and this is retro calcaneal bursitis of course what is new is this one if you compare this group with the previous one previously we find some retro calcaneal bursitis and brain uh, bone edema with uh, insertional tendinopathy constitutes bursitis retro calcaneal bursitis if there is additionally insertional uh, posterior or retro achilles retro achilles bursitis like this that means this is called high gland syndrome Tendinitis, tendinosis, tendinopathy, all something are acute with dots of internal signal. And if chronic, it results in fusiform enlargement with internal segment. So, tendin the word tendinitis or tendinosis or tendinopathy of the Achilles tendon all indicate something acute the norm the contour is normal but there are some dots of internal signal the difference between acute and chronic is fusiform enlargement this is fusiform enlargement with internal signal fusiform enlargement with internal signal <coughs> fusiform enlargement with internal signal same tendinopathy and partial tear this is fusiform enlargement something chronic partial tear means the fibers are not there the black fibers are not there partial tear of the Achilles tendon focal internal signal breaking on the surface to differentiate, to differentiate between internal signal of tendinitis if it is tendinitis it is inside if it is breaking on the surface is called partial tear so this is tendinosis or tendinitis with internal signal change abnormal signal but this one there is interruption reaching to the surface it is called partial tear Complete tear when you find nothing there in the region of the uh, uh, Achilles in the axial scans uh, images, you find some fluid that means that the fibers are interrupted and this is complete tear. Here it is. This is complete tear of the Achilles tendon. Complete tear of the Achilles tendon. Hypointensity 1, hyperintensity 2 in fluid collection, and there is no fibers passing there. Now, finishing the posterior, we'll go to the medial compartment. We have the famous uh, tibialis posterior tendon, digitorum, and Halus's muscle. In grade one tibialis posterior tendon, we will find that the tendon is, as before, swollen with edema around. For the flexor digitorum and the flexor halysis, uh, uh, here again is still the tibialis posterior, tibialis posterior tear, this one is tibialis posterior tear, tibialis posterior tear, there is minimal fluid, fluid around the flexor digitorum. and flexor halysis tendons
Now, we look at this. This was what we call the sustentaculum telae. What is posterior is the flexor hallucis longus. And it is lying between the middle and lateral posterior telar tubercles. Flexor hallucis longus shows 20% fluid uh, in normal subjects in 20 percent between the between the, the course of the tendon is between the tailor tubercles the flexor hallucis longus may get out of this may get out of this sometimes it is dislocated displaced so to repeat again the medial compartment, we have the tibialis posterior tendon. We have the flexor digitorum and we have the flexor hallucis. And this is an example of the <coughs> grade one tear of the tibialis. There is no cut, there is only swelling and edema. Of the tibialis posterior tendon. <laughs> Here, the same, peritendinal tendin fluid, swelling and peritendinous fluid, swelling and peritendinous fluid. This is tibialis posterior tear. The flexor hallucis here is surrounded with fluid. Uh, in this one, there is some fluid seen around the flexor hallucis and for the flexor hallucis here we have uh, to know the course of the of the tendon between the medial and the, and the lateral posterior tailor tubercles it may be dislocated out here is some fluid around but notice that usually in 20% of people with, uh, with uh, uh, MRI for the ankle show fluid around the flexor hallucis lungs. So this fluid is not pathognomonic except if associated with injury. And as we said, the tendon is between the two tubercle, medial and lateral, medial and lateral uh, tibial tubercles. The lateral compartments are the two perineae, briefs and longus. Briefs is first, longus is posterior. Briefs is anterior, longus is posterior. And both are around the retromalurar sulcus. Of course, they are lateral. This is the sulcus. This is the C shape. And they may, the, the, Leaves and uh, longus are behind this. The lateral components of the retromalular sulcus. Subluxation retromalular sulcus shape. May, this one may, may, may allow displacement. This retinaculum may be torn. Complication of, complication of calcaneal fracture or bad sprain. So to get lateral compartment injury, that means that there is calcaneal fracture. Usually there is calcaneal fracture. To displace this, it's according to the shape of this one. <coughs> Usually it is concave, but sometimes it's flat or convex. If, if this concavity is flat or convex, these muscles, these tendons can be dis displaced. If the retinaculum is intact, this is good. If not, that means can be displaced. So the tendons should be medial, medial to the edge of the C of the fibula. This is the lateral malulus. The two tendons should be medial to this C. To repeat again this complex 
complexity first the tendons should be medial to the C second if there is injury of the retinaculum or if there is loss of the concavity of this area we can get dislocation or displacement of the tendons from its place usually lesions of these tendons are associated with calcaneal fractures so the, the, the together together calcaneal fracture superior retinaculum injury displacement of tendons loss of concavity are all to be searched for for this area the, the tendons should be medial to the C loop of the lateral ballulus in this image the tendons are ruptured because there is some fracture here and in this one this is the normal this is the peroneus briefs which course anterior and this is the peroneus longus which caused posterior now this uh, again Peroneal rupture of the peroneal with interruption. Interruption. Now going to the anterior compartment, we have the tibialis anterior, the halluses, extensor halluses, and the extensor digitorum, and bound anteriorly by the superior and inferior, and there is the neck anterior and, and inferior superior and inferior retinacula by retinacula so this is the tibialis anterior extensor halysis longus and extensor digitorum tibialis anterior injury again we will find that swollen Will be swollen or cut like this in interruption and remember that it is the fourth most common tendon to be injured achilles number one posterior tibialis posterior number two and the peroneal tendon injury number three and this is number four rupture typically occurs in runners below the superior extensor retinaculum in this area this is the area of stressing the tendon now cystic lesion addition to a joint we can say ganglion first and this is the ganglion full of fluid full of fluid the common site are the the sheases near to the sheases it's hyper intense in T2 with it images and a neural moma is also can be seen as a soft tissue near to a joint but it is not typically homogeneous it shows soft tissue uh, intensity intermediate intensity inside giant cell tumor of tendon sheath may result in erosion of the nearby bones by pressure atrophy like this one cavernous hemangioma is a serpentine hyper intense foci of, of t2 signal with occasional hypo intense foci due to amicidrin or fluvoli this is cavernous hemangioma with mottling the key point is serpentine appearance or mottling The anthoma of the Achilles is well known soft tissue swelling of the distal Achilles without trauma 
but it, there is usual it is usually bilateral and show some enhancement this is what we call xanthoma of the tendo achilles so xanthoma of the tendo achilles is a swelling a fusiform swelling which may enhance faintly and it is commonly bilateral <coughs> it is it has no relation with trauma an abscess can behave like abscess in any way we have the general signs and symptoms of infection a central abscess will show ring enhancement and will show marrow edema around and it's of course it, it should be painful Synovial sarcoma, as we said before, it arises near to a joint and not in the joint. It is a soft tissue mass related to synovium, near to a joint, adjacent to a joint, and may cause some pressure, invasion, but it's mainly outside the bone. Synovial sarcoma. Neurofibroma is a well-defined tumor multiple usually multiple and it it will show intermediate t1 and t2 weighted uh, in uh, intermediate t1 and t2 intensities neurofibroma the turf toe or the football player toe is due to acute hyperextension will result in injury at the first metatarsophalangeal joint some edema some fluid with interruption it is the it is the fibrocartilage which is interrupted this area since for the metatarsal neck to the proximal phalanges it should be a line here this line is cut like this this is called turf toe or the hyperextension injury the only change you can detect is some fluid around or near to the metatarsopharyngeal joint. Synovitis and tenosynovitis enhancement within the joint and the adjacent flexor tendon sheath. Here we are in the, we are in the level of the second metatarsopharyngeal joint. We have some edema around the joint and some edema around the tendon synovitis and tenosynovitis different appearance for tendon enhancement for tendon uh, hyper intensity Now going to osteomyelitis of the first metatarsal head and septic arthritis <coughs> in a woman with systemic lupus. The extensor tendon sheath demonstrates edema and enhancement indicating associated tenosynovitis. Now in osteoarthritis we know that we have loose bodies, we have narrowing of the joint, we have sclerosis of the margins, we have new bone formation, osteophytes. These are the components of the uh, osteoarthritis. So in osteoarthritis, expect that the margins will be sclerosed and the joint will be narrowed. There should be osteophytosis and loose bodies and sometimes pseudocystic changes. The gout, in gout we have the soft tissue to fly near to the intermetatarsal and tarsometatarsal joints. In ganglion you expect a small cyst subcutaneous tissue and related to one of the tendons, it's called dorsal ganglia. Submetatarsal bursitis could be a disease showing personal inflammation with some fluid collection, 
submit a third cellular cytis. If there is foreign body, it may well form a granuloma resulting in low intensity soft tissue. <coughs> nodular region in the subcutaneous tissue of low intensity communicating with the skin surface or near to the skin surface that means that there is foreign body there Morton neuroma is the are masses of, uh, of uh, perineural fibrosis it's fibroma essentially interdigiting between the toes and they chose diffuse enhancement. Plantar fibromatosis again shows some enhancement and it is usually on the plantar surface. Mass of intermediate intensity which enhance at the plantar surface of the foot. If there is destruction of the bones, this means that there is an aggressive tumor condition. This is the, what is this? Now we have here the multiple osteolytic lesions. We have osteoporosis, we have disorganized proximal joints, we have fractures, we have condensation, we have fragmentation. So this area represents a charcot joint and this area represents a peripheral diabetic foot and this is the famous one with the dorsalis medis calcification. <coughs> Here what is this? Remember that there are some stresses can occur and a stress fracture appear due to condensation of bone like this this is stress fracture falling on the calcaneum and here we have the large fusiform swelling of the Achilles tendon no history of trauma so this is the xanthoma and here we have tear and here we have the fracture talus and reconstruction CT to show the fracture site and here we have the large thickness of the soft tissue due to acromegaly and we here we have tarsal coalition or the talocalcanium coalition. Thank you.